Hi folks, welcome to part four of our fixturing recap series. Today, we're gonna to focus on large parts. Card here though to the NYC CNC page that lists all 10 of these recap videos covering great ways to help inspire you to think about ways to fixture and hold your parts. So when we say large parts, really what we mean is something that's not going to fit in a traditional six inch vise. First up, widget 201, when we made our own Pearson Pro palette. Uh, and this and many of the large parts are great examples of where our own ModVice platform works really well. The ModVices are incredibly versatile, incredibly cost-effective way to hold parts around two or even four edges of your parts. And that's exactly what we did here. We used two sets of ModVices to hold this piece of aluminum extrusion. That allowed us to do all the critical work in one setup as well as access all four of the outside edges. We did what looks like a similar workflow in widget 249 when we made this Tormach accessory rack, except it's not exactly what meets the eye. We actually used the pair of mod vices to hold a piece of aluminum that we then decked. That gave us a really flat plane that we could then use with this super glue technique. We temporarily installed dowel pins. This allowed us to easily and accurately locate our raw material while we're super gluing it, but we can then remove them to gain full access to the profile of the part. We'll have a whole separate video dedicated on that technique in and of itself, but it ends up it's a really good way to give yourself a, a very flexible platform to hold larger parts like this. Next up, Johnny Five, machining these large boomerang plates. This is a great example of where it just makes sense to put the material directly on your machine table. It's another example of where having a fixture plate really shines but you want to put something between the fixture plate and the part, which in this case, we're using our acrylic plate savers. This spaces the part up plenty high enough so that you can machine all the way through the part, both along the periphery and through holes and other internal features and not risk machining into your plate. But if you're interested in large work, definitely take a look at this video because the other key thing that we cover in it is mid machining fixture and clamp location moving. Because sometimes when you've got a large part, you need to clamp one area of it, and then in the same setup, you want to add new clamps and take away the other clamps. It's a relatively easy workflow to go through once you've seen it done, so check out that video. In widget 231, Ed was making a plate for his DIY CNC conversion that actually involves an antique lathe, I believe a south bend. Now it's not a huge part, but it's just thin enough relative to its footprint that it would be prone to chatter. But it's a great example where a hockey puck, which happens to be just the right height to match in with a one inch parallel or the Saunders Machine Works mod device, works great at providing that stabilization to never let chatter start to happen. Because chatter is ultimately a vibration or a harmonic. And that hockey puck being coplanar and rubber just does a perfect job soaking it up. We've also used door stops to accomplish the same thing. On this Johnny Five toe tip part, we machined it from steel. We started by holding the raw material between two mod vices, but we then machined an aluminum fixture, which, which we could mount that part to using existing features, some of which would stay, some of which would be removed downstream. And that gave us full access to the outside profile where we still added some brass clamps as needed just to ensure we had ample rigidity and avoided any chatter. Having clamps like these, they're commonly called strap clamps or toe clamps, is an invaluable resource for any machinist. And for anyone new to machining, this style instead is very common to have. Those look pretty different than the clamps you see here. And there's three key differences. Number one, these are brass, so they're going to be less likely to mar your part. Number two, the back end of the clamp is tapped for a fastener. This allows you to quickly adjust the height. It keeps the screw captive, and it means you don't need one of those pesky step blocks that may fall off or require repositioning every time you loosen and restrap the clamp. Pro tip of putting a compression spring underneath the clamp screw. That holds the clamp up. That way when you loosen the clamp, the clamp stays out of the way and you can easily remove your current part and load your next part in. Especially on custom parts or one-off parts, it may make sense to have those pauses in your program or your G-code where you can then add a strap clamp or something to temporarily stabilize the part. To add a pause in any Fusion 360 program, go to Setup, Manual NC, change the type to Stop, Click OK, and we can drag that operation anywhere you want it. In this case, after the boring is complete, the machine will stop. Usually if you have a tower light, it'll start blinking. and wait for the operator to come over, do whatever you need to do, and then you hit cycle start again to resume with the next operation. Next up, machining the Arduino Taskmaster. 
one of the strangest projects that we've done from a fixturing standpoint. And to be honest, it may not exactly be correct to consider this a fixturing technique, except we wanted to make this box, but we didn't want to buy the material because such a high percentage of it was going to be machined away. So we used this Loctite H8000 glue that we purchased from McMaster, and we glued these inexpensive pieces of half inch aluminum together to form a rough box, which we then machined down to finish size, and you really can't even tell that it started as four separate pieces. Now you might be wondering, why is this in the large parts video? It's because we've done this exact same technique when we've needed a particularly large piece of raw material that we may not have or may otherwise be prohibitively expensive, but you can make it work by combining multiple pieces into one. And the last two relate to large cylindrical work. Don't overlook the ability to use a lathe chuck or a fourth axis along with a tail stock to hold large parts, whether you need to do fourth axis positional style work or you just need to hold a large, otherwise difficult to hold piece of material on your machine. In Widget 248, we did this for a Johnny Five toe tip tube. And finally, showing off how Area 419 flutes their rifle barrels. Really an ingenious setup. There's a Haas rotary with a Haas tailstock, but the key to this setup is a slotted stabilization jig that floats so it can be adjusted as needed depending on the barrel contour or taper to provide a backstop support as that barrel's being fluted. As usual, folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. We'll have an NYC CNC page card here with all of these videos listed out as well as all 10 fixturing recap videos that we've been doing. Otherwise, take care, see you soon.